Hello, hello. Okay, we are in week three of this month's Book Nook Enneagram Made Easy. I wanted to just film this real quick, easy video to help pass along my takeaways so far from the book. Um, curious to get your guys' thoughts. Definitely put um, some questions, comments, feedback in the comments below. I would love to hear how this read is going for you. Also, I have selected our next book. I'm not announcing it in this video, but I am very excited and you're gonna be too when you hear who I'm bringing on to meet with us next month. Anyway, okay, this is a great time. If you have not yet taken the quiz to figure out your Enneagram type, I would go ahead and do so now. Keep in mind, Deborah, the author of this, really says, you know, this is about a journey. So you might take the quiz and you might not resonate with that particular number. This is a great opportunity uh, when we have the Zoom call on Thursday, May 9th, 7 p.m. Eastern, to hop on and ask her your questions. One of the reasons she wanted you, all of us, to not take the quiz right away, there's a few reasons, but one of them she said, you know, once we find out and lock in on our Enneagram style, we're really not going to take in as much information about the other numbers. Knowing the other numbers is a great opportunity to start to understand people around you who maybe are those Enneagram types. And then also, she said this is really about a journey and there is a very important self-discovery component in here. So you may take the quiz, you may find out, hey, you're a four when you really were highly resonating with maybe Enneagram seven. And there's something to be said for that. And she wants you to bring those kinds of comments, questions, feedback, to the Zoom meeting so that we can pick her brain, kind of talk things out. She is an expert in this topic, so I'm so excited for her to join us. If you guys can't come, you can email me any questions. You know we'll record it. You know you'll get the recording. So I am happy to ask your questions for you so that you also get that opportunity. Okay, so I want to just touch on, again, like I said, my takeaways so far from this book. Um, you know, my mission really in everything I'm doing online and particularly in this book club, which I love having you guys with me here, is to help women connect more deeply with one another and with ourselves. And so the reason I chose this book is I thought this is a great way to really get to know and understand ourselves. I think so many of us at some point in our lives feel weird or feel like outliers I know we all have gone into situations and put on masks. We have um, lost ourselves and asked the question of how do I show up to this social event? Who am I gonna be here? What mask am I gonna wear? And I think the more that we start to understand why we are how we are, um, we can start to show up as our authentic self. And what happens when we do that is that we form these incredible, deep, authentic, and vulnerable connections with others around us. These turn into some of the most deepest and meaningful friendships that you could ever ask for. So I thought this would be an incredible opportunity for self-discovery and just something kind of fun to play around with. It's also really, really incredible to know the Enneagram of people around you. I think I shared when I was announcing this book, like in our office, I love to know our staff's Enneagram. I know Jason's Enneagram, he knows mine. We joke about it often. Like this is something in the culture, in our marriage and our relationship where we understand some of the quirky habits and rituals that we each have. Um, this is also, you know, I think sometimes, I don't know if you guys experienced this, but when I was reading like, I don't know what she calls it, but I'll call it like the shadow side of certain Enneagrams. I'm like, oh God, that feels horrible. Like it's not fun to read those things and then to, maybe resonate with them or if you took a quiz and you are that person like those may be very true things about you that you may not want to see those may be completely not things that you align with i would say just keep this all really light and fun and informative um again this is just this is just something that we can engage in for self-discovery i think we take from it what works from us we ditch what doesn't and it's not something meant to um, I don't know, to like shame how you show up at any time. Like we all have shadowy sides. We all have ways that we show up when we're out of balance. That's okay. This is more about creating a consciousness and creating an awareness. Um, I took some notes. I want to make sure I'm just touching on everything I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I'm going to talk about the different sections she explores in a minute. But, you know, just going back to the consciousness and awareness, 
I don't want to say too much because I don't want to divulge my type yet, but what I feel like happens the more and more we get to know ourselves, right? So depending on how long you've been in this club, we've read books like Untethered Soul, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, um, Atomic Habits. Like one of the main goals I have for you in going through these processes is to start to make the unconscious conscious. What do I mean by that? There's so many things that we just do throughout our day that we don't think about. There's ways that we show up in the world. There's ways that we react instead of respond. What we can start to do is um, create an awareness in our life where we're kind of like watching and witnessing or at least giving ourselves the opportunity for a pause. I love the quote by Viktor Frankl and he talks about um, the power of the pause and between uh, uh, stimulus and response is a pause and that's where our power sits. So in gaining all this information through the books that we've read, I hope to create the opportunity for a pause for you so that when you would normally take one track in your life, you at least give yourself the opportunity to make a choice, make a decision. So if normally in a situation of conflict, if you would perhaps get really quiet and get internal and maybe shut down, maybe at least now, if the only thing that happens is that you have an awareness around that, so that you realize that you're doing it and you give yourself the choice of, yeah, this is actually what I wanna do here. Or you know what, I don't wanna do that just because I've always done that. I have something to say, I'm gonna speak up. It's creating an awareness, becoming conscious of our patterns so that we can make decisions from an empowered place, from an informed place. That is my goal for you. And so with some of these things, you know, like maybe if you were reading some things about your Enneagram that you didn't love or like don't even wanna admit, but maybe they resonate with you. Like simply create an awareness around them so that when you're doing them, you're aware and like, oh gosh, there's my four showing up. Like it's again, last time I'll say this, it's not to shame or guilt ourselves, it's to create an awareness. And I think if we can, again, keep it light and funny and airy and just kind of joke about it, that's where again, it's great if you live with someone to know their Enneagram as well. Cause you could be like, I feel your four coming out. I feel your five coming out. Like it's just, it's just a way to recognize our habits and behaviors. Okay, so I wanna just kind of go through the different sections that she talks about for each Enneagram, share some knowledge behind it, so hopefully it helps you create a deeper understanding, and then we can ask her all of the questions that we have on the call. Um, but basically, each in this book, each Enneagram is explored through what she calls the center of intelligence, so it's either the body, the heart, or the head. So each center really gravitates towards one of these areas of the body and the emotions tied to that um, part. So that doesn't mean to say that, you know, if yours isn't, let me, let me backtrack. So um, let me just look in here to give an example. I think you guys all read this, but. Um, okay, so there's the three centers, the body, the heart, and the head. So the body is what I wanted to get to. Each center has a connection to a particular emotion. So anything within the body center, any of the Enneagram numbers within the body center are mainly connected to anger and rage. It doesn't mean if you took the test and you fall into an Enneagram that is in the body center, that that is your primary emotion. Like again, this is a journey of exploration. This isn't like a lock you in thing. It doesn't mean that you can't feel the other feelings like shame or guilt. Um, or fear or anxiety. I think we all know that we hover between all these things. You can come in. But that that might be kind of like one of the main emotions that you tend to gravitate to. I do happen to resonate with what they said for mine. Hi, Kai. We're talking about this book. You can let us know if you have anything to add. Okay. So she talks about the center of intelligence, which is the body, the heart, or the head. So just creating an awareness around like, what are the default emotions of that center and do they resonate with you? Again, creating an awareness, okay? I tend to gravitate towards guilt or shame when I'm out of balance, or like if I have a kid home that's not feeling good and I'm doing some work, I could easily fall into guilt or shame, but I realize Kaya is doing just fine and that I'm a better mom when I can get some of my stuff done and snuggle so I don't need to fall into those patterns of guilt or shame, right? Doesn't help anyone. <laughs> okay, then she talks about... Hmm, maybe later we could make cookies, that sounds good. Okay, 
Frosting and sprinkles. Delicious. Okay. Um, so then, I love you. Then she talks about basic fear. I love this part. Basic fear, basic desire, and core motivation. This is really fascinating. She just shared a paragraph on each of these things. So I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read a book, I'll read stuff and then I don't even catch that part. That's what's fun about a book club is we can compare notes. What I read and took away might be completely different than what you read and took away. But I think the basic fear and desire and core motivation are really fascinating. So each Enneagram has a basic fear, a basic desire, and a core motivation. A basic fear is how we rationalize what we do and what we feel. So for some of us, she talks about this is how we avoid showing up as our authentic self. So if you're someone, if your Enneagram has a basic fear of like feeling useless or helpless, you might overcompensate from that. Like you do not want to feel useless or helpless and completely shift into like a pattern of I'm going to do everything for everyone around me because I do not want to get... Um, I do not want to feel unworthy because I can't get stuff done. This is how we put on the mask to protect ourselves. When why, it's so funny, like, it's so ironic the more we learn about this stuff because you realize, like, none of these things are bad. Like, n nobody is useless. But when you can start to also understand, you know, if you're going through this with a friend and your friend is an Enneagram whose basic fear is feeling useless, like how beautiful to show up for one another and to know each other's insecurities because someone on the outside can so easily remind you like, oh my gosh, you would never, I would never think of you as useless. These are all the things that you do. And even if you needed to have a day where maybe you sat around and were kind of useless, like that's okay. That could also be looked at as a day of rest and recovery that's not useless. So it's just nice. It allows us to kind of zoom out and become the observer, like Michael Singer's Untethered Soul, if you were with us for book one, that helps you realize like, these are all lies. These are all stories that we create and we can again, keep it light and fun and catch ourselves falling into the be these behaviors. Like I know at my core, I am not useless. Like why do I need to overcompensate and run around when actually what I need is a day of rest? Like I'm gonna create a day of rest for myself. And how beautiful if you have kids for them to see you role modeling, things like that. And to maybe even be using those words like, gosh, I really want to rest right now, but my, my ego or I have this little voice in my head that's telling me I can't because that's useless when in reality, I know I just did all this for all of you. So I'm going to be over here on the couch. I'm going to fill my tank because that's what my body's yearning for, right? Like, why can't we create those stories for our kids so early on? All right, a, brace, a basic desire is the next section. So our basic desire, it's interesting, she talks about in this paragraph about it in the book, like obviously for most people, our basic desire is going to be that we want to feel love or happy or accepted. Our basic desire is about going a level deeper than that. So our basic desire is about the conditions that we feel we must meet in order to be loved, happy, and accepted. So for someone that might mean they need to feel a sense of significance. They might need to feel capable. They might need to feel that they're worthy. These are really interesting things because how do you, <laughs> we all do this. This is again, like when you can keep this light and easy and fun and zoom out, like what are your qualifications for feeling capable? What makes you feel worthy? Like how deep do you want to go with this and realize and discover like how kind of silly it all is? So basic desire is our, is the conditions that we feel we must meet in order to feel happy, loved, and accepted. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy how much pressure we put on ourselves. Our core motivation. So these three things are really powerful. Our basic fear, our basic desire, and our core motivations. And like, if you take the test and your, um, the Enneagram that is like selected for you doesn't resonate with you, maybe look at these three things, the basic fear, the basic th desire, and the core motivation of other Enneagrams and use that as your guide. Like Deborah really welcomes. She's like, if people want to come on and say, you know, I took the quiz and I showed up as a four, but I read seven and I was like, I am a seven. Like she wants those kind of discussions on the, on the um, call. So feel free. 
Okay, the core motivation is the coming together of our basic fear, our basic desire, with the assistance of our core wound. So this is, our core motivation becomes our internal drive. This is what gets us out of the bed in the morning. This is why we do what we do. This is our biggest want in our lives. This is how we make every single decision. So the core motivation is really powerful. If you want, even just go through all the Enneagrams, read that and be like, boom, that one's me. So I think it's really interesting, again, to come to the meeting, like take notes. If you have a journal, like I really resonated with the core fear of four. I resonated with the core motivation of eight, um, but I took the quiz and I'm a two. Like, what does that mean? Those are great discussions and conversations for us to have together. Then there are the wings and the lines and arrows. So the wing is on each side of our dominant point, there are two wings. Um, and usually one, like if you're an eight, and I'm making up these numbers, I don't know them by heart. If you're an eight and every eight mainly has a four or a two wing, you will probably have one or the other. So this is why you can have two people that are Enneagram eight that show up very differently. So my husband and I are actually the same Enneagram. I do believe that we have different wings. I honestly hadn't explored wings or lines and arrows that much until this book. So, um, cause there are ways that we definitely function very differently. And we are also very similar in a lot of ways. So there's the wings and then there's the lines and arrows. The lines and arrows are really cool too, because this shows us where we, um, can gravitate towards in times of stress or in times of growth. This might also be where some of the overlap occurs where you're like, okay, on the quiz, I showed up as a two, but I really resonate with a lot of sevenness. Well, perhaps there's like lines and arrows, strong lines and arrows between seven and two, right? So like when you're stressed, you might show up as more of a two than a seven, things like that. Again, these are great questions, conversations, and dialogue for us to have on that call with her. We can ask about all these things. Um, but you use the lines and arrows to see the patterns that you tend to fall into in times of stress, right? So usually with a line or arrow, you're going to see things like um, you can fall into like scatteredness or shutting down emotionally or getting, you know, um, withdrawn or judgy or um, hypercritical, hyperjudgmental, either on yourself or others. And then... Um, it can also show, you know, where you fall into when you're in healthy states of, of your Enneagram. So you might fall into a line or arrow of a healthy state of like a five. Um, you might become super charismatic. You might become very clear at decision making. So the goal is, and like this isn't just about this book here, what I'm going to say. The goal is, is that understanding that we have what I would like to call the way that we live when, when, when we're in alignment when we're connected, um, when we are living as our truest self, our highest self. And then there's the reality of life, right? And life gets a little bit lifey and life throws us out of balance. So what do we do in those times to get ourselves back here quickly? I just filmed um, the next episode for the podcast and this is exactly what I talked about. Like I had a day the other day where I woke up and life felt lifey from the get-go. And what's important is you know, I will never sit here and say that I don't have those days. I have those days all the time. The goal isn't to not have those days. We have to feel our feelings. Like that's really important. There's so much power and clarity and insights and growth opportunity in our feelings. But the key is, is, you know, when we fall out of balance or when these feelings feel too much, or when we are feeling like we can't get through the day because of these feelings, like how do we get back quickly? And so, you know, all the tools I share on all the platforms, book club or, um, you know, the podcast are all about that. And with the Enneagram, I think it's about recognizing like, okay, in my Enneagram, when I'm out of balance, I present as like an unhealthy five and that's what shows up, right? So I feel really scattered when I'm out of balance. What can I do to get back in my body? Connection code. I've shared like the connection code. Um, all over the podcast, if you guys haven't had it, the connection code is one of the greatest tools to getting yourself back into alignment, getting yourself back in your body, out of your head, getting out of these scattered places or getting out of these places where like, maybe we can't get motivated to go because we're just so overwhelmed. The connection code, um, if you guys haven't seen it on some of the other things I share online, the podcast or YouTube or whatever, comment below or email me and I'll send it to you. Um, I literally used it on myself the other day and I was like, God, Jay, this thing works really well. I'm so glad I created this. 
But, um, you know, again, it's just all about knowing ourselves and our patterns, knowing when we feel best and how to get there, knowing that what happens that pulls us out and how to get back in. That is the goal. That is why I want you guys to have all these tools um, to get to know yourself better so that you recognize each state and then to pick and choose the tools that work from you, for you from each of these great books that we're reading. That is the key. Okay, lines and arrows. Um, yeah, those were the main things. And then, you know, I love the stories in here. I think the stories are so powerful. As you know, you read about people discovering their Enneagram. I think it's very relatable. I highly recommend reading those stories. There were other just like little um, blurbs and sentences. I found myself, I mean, I'm a highlighter. Do you guys do this? Do you like, I do like the highlights and take notes and then I always love to go back. So a few of the things that I highlighted, I wanted to share just to wrap this video up with you guys. Um, these were a couple of my like favorite takeaways that I read. So this was something she said, I think towards the beginning, just a simple one-liner. If you take the time to learn about how you show up in the world, the reward you will receive is beyond measure. I love that. I have experienced this over the last few years. Like I have just made the conscious decision to get to know myself better and to realize that I'm worthy of spending time with myself and that, um, you know, believing and trusting that I would show up as a better mom, as a better friend by taking this time. And I promise you it works. And so I just, I really encourage you guys, um, to, to take time to learn about yourself and why you do what you do, because the reality is, is you are incredible. You are fascinating. You need to stop we all need to stop feeling like we need to hide who we are because it is our uniqueness that is such a gift to the world. And the more that we learn about these funny little quirks about ourselves, I think the more we start to embrace them and accept them and show up into the world that way. And again, that's when we form these beautiful, deep friendships and relationships that honestly, I know that we're all craving and we deserve. The last one, I love this. You cannot give to another something that you don't have for yourself. So how can you under, how can we expect to give love and connection and um, like the creation of space of trust for our friends, our relationships, our children, <clears throat> our spouses to show up authentically <laughs> as them if we don't first do it for ourselves. So again, I'll say it. You cannot, Kai, listen to this one. This is a good one. Maybe we put it on the fridge. Ready? You cannot give to another something that you don't have for yourself. We cannot give presence and love and acceptance to someone if we first don't give presence and love and acceptance to ourselves. This is so powerful. So those were my main takeaways. Love that you guys read this book. I think it's a, it's a good teaser on like this system of Enneagram. There's a lot of other great resources out there and I can share them for anyone who wants to take it deeper. Um, we're gonna completely change it up for our next book. You are gonna die. I'm so excited. Um, okay, but that's it. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear how this book is going for you. I would love to know your Enneagram number if you know it and you wanna share it. You can in the comments or you can bring it to the call. All right, sisters, we'll see you later. Okay, peace out. Peace out. <laughs>